Welcome to a new update in which we're going to discuss my altcoin portfolio. We're going to look at the news in the altcoin markets and a general overview of what is happening in the markets and when we can start buying those altcoins. As this week I tweeted buy altcoins, but what do we need in order to have that? It's going to be a little bit shorter as this update is provided to you by me. I still want to do these updates, but as you can see, I've got a double eye infection, so I can't handle screens too long. That's why we keep the update short. Before we continue, make uh, sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Also, I've got a slight promotion currently, which is not related to crypto. It is about gold. If you are aware of myself and the investment portfolio that I have, I've got cash, crypto and commodities and all three of them are important to have. And yes, cash, I know it's quite boring, but you should be having it to remain flexible. With gold, it is important to sustain into debt or in, in, in commodities because it's a relatively stable and um, uh, inflation hedge, which is um, not as variable or uh, having a high variance as every other asset has, uh, through which it is a good step forward if you want to start building your portfolio. And if you want to get started with gold, I think the platform to go to is the Gold Republic platform, which is the best and easiest way to move forward. You can get <coughs> gold silver and platinum there physical so if you want to get it for yourself you can actually get it you can see which bar it is and you can get your gram of gold for free which is approximately 50 euros you can get it completely for free if you get an account which you can find in the description beneath uh, before the may 18th and then you can get started with your gold silver and platinum platform i'm trading myself through gold republic and i think Although gold is at an all-time high, right now is the best moment to get yourself into a, an, all, a portfolio of these assets. Now, in this update, we are going to dive into the altcoin markets and we are going to dive into my portfolio. When we look at my portfolio, the portfolio is still correcting down. And I've seen a ton of questions from people that were asking, hey, what are you going to do with the altcoin portfolio at this point? Are you going to sell? I'm going to remain really calm. The altcoin portfolio is there for the longer term. This is a portfolio that I'll be using over the years, which means that right now I've been buying, I'm underwater, but those things can change fast. The returns will all be provided and be transparent and I will all be sharing my strategy and the strategy is relatively simple. I've been buying a few assets at the beginning, which are Chainlink at 200, for $250, Atom it for $200, Curve for $150, RSR for $100, Lux for $200, which is the biggest loser, AXS for $100 as well, which is also down 28%. During the period, um, we have actually originated this entire thing around like $850, so approximately down 10%. But we have sold Chainlink a little bit to buy Curve, and we have been selling Chainlink to buy Lux. Um, and Lux is definitely the one that is the most painful in this portfolio. We're going to discuss that in a little bit. But what is the news of today or from the week? It is, of course, the meme coin Pepe or Wojak or Mong or Fuck Pepe. Um, all those things are trending quite nicely. And it's the recent hype as previously we've had injective protocol, not Indian injective, but Indian injective protocol which was moving quite nicely in the previous period and had such a big rally um, and currently consolidating, most likely even breaking up again. But all those things, if you're not in them quite early, it is great for trading perspectives as trades can easily be done from these charts and can be activated. So you have got a clean chart with high volume, high volatility, same goes for Pepper. If we look at Pepe at this point, I think that it's quite clear that this chart is not the entire chart. People are up like 25,000% already, which means that if you want to start trading Pepe, it is definitely one to just use for trading perspective. But I would definitely argue to not use it for an investment perspective at all. You can see the stories of people making a ton of money, but on the flip side, there's also a bunch of people that are losing money. So I would definitely argue to not actually go crazy on these assets except for trading pepper we'll be discussing that in a little bit too i've discussed pepper in my trade letter 
uh, which is giving you a clear view of the markets and the levels that I'm looking at with Pepe. Um, I've given you a full analysis into it. Make sure to subscribe to the trade letter in the description beneath, which gives you a trade letter three times per week with free content. And today I've been adding a lot of people that have been requesting access, so probably you will be, get it, be getting it into your mailbox. Pepe is still trending up, which means that we can still find trade opportunities. Um, if we get here, it's a bounce play. If we break up higher, make a bearish divergence, it's a short play. If we go back down here, it's a bounce play. Those trades are all easy to be done, just like we have been seeing this range that we have been using previously and can all be activated quite nicely as a result for continuation. Until then, it's still a trend that's going to go upwards uh, until proven otherwise. So if we have this consolidation here, we start trending downwards, you get the exact same, right? Trend up, breakdown rejection at the previous level. And then downwards movements in which we can just trade the downwards trend, which is tricky. So I would definitely argue to not have high leverage as then the funding rate will kill you entirely. Looking at the altcoin markets, there are a few charts that we should be looking at. First of all, it's the Bitcoin dominance chart, which is currently still grinding higher and higher and higher, which means that we are getting to the end stage of this run. Uh, we are seeing that the RSI is getting into a stage that we are going to have a reversal relatively soon. But the question is, how far will we go? Most likely, and I've made this scenario previously, we're getting something like this. Question is, why are we getting something like that? It is due to the fact that Bitcoin is going to break to the upside. If Bitcoin breaks 30k, dominance will start accelerating until Bitcoin consolidates, then money flows towards ETH, and then the altcoins will follow afterwards. The other hand, other chart, which you should be watching, is the market cap orders dominance chart. I understand that since January of 2022, altcoins have been tumbling down. So it's not the best period to jump into altcoins. Um, this period was still a great period for altcoins to play them. And since then, it's shorting them until proven otherwise. So what does that mean? It means that we are trending down here, right? So we're making lower highs, we are making lower lows, and as a result, the orders market cap have also been dropping down. It is uh, without more uh, Bitcoin and ETH. But the good part is that we're getting into a stage of a potential bottom as we are finding ourselves into a crucial area. We've got this period here. This was approximately 19 months. This is also close to 19 months. So within the next one to two months, we are getting a bottom here and start reversing back up. In order to have that, Bitcoin needs to find support and then Ether needs to find support um, or at least bounce in the Bitcoin pair and then we can have continuation taking place on the markets. So I've got two levels marked here and right now you can see that the uh, oldest dominance chart is still trending down. I've got 8.6% and I've got 7.0%. These two are quite important to keep an eye on. A bounce can easily be placed from here. Um, and these can also then uh, warrant a potential bullish divergence on the weekly time frame for the others dominance chart. So this is an important one to keep an eye on. It would be great to have the accumulation taking place right now. And if you're looking at the altcoins, for instance, if you're looking at Chainlink again against Bitcoin, I've been mentioning this before, but we are still into an accumulation phase. We are retesting the May 2022 bottom here. And usually those double bottom tests are the trigger for, good, for a reversal, which means that this is still the area that you want to start accumulating your positions. Ether against Bitcoin is the other chart you should be keeping an eye on. Um, I've been mentioning this before. Uh, we've had this run up during the hype and during uh, going towards the merge. We've had a correction towards the Shanghai upgrade, which resulted into a positive reaction into resistance. Um, so the trend is still downwards, as you can see, lower highs, lower lows, which means that this level is still there to be tested and can easily be tested if Bitcoin starts to break to the upside. It's only like 15% down, which means that Ether against USDT is most likely not even going to have such a big impact. Uh, because Bitcoin will break out massively, so ETH against USDT remains flat. If Bitcoin is going to crash, of course, um, then this one remains stable, but the ETH against USDT value starts to drop. But if Bitcoin is going to have a volatile move to the upside, that is going to be the period when this one starts to fall. 
On the other hand, what I would like to see is that either against you, Bitcoin is going to make this breakout ab above the previous lower high. If that takes place, we're most likely going to get an expansion. And as a result, we could be getting a case of altcoins starting to follow suit. So those are the two that I'm looking at right now when it comes to Ether against Bitcoin. Ether against USDT, it's still showing a chart where we most likely are going to have a break to the upside. I need to get a clean chart, otherwise it's going to be a little bit too tricky. Um, at this point, we have got... Hey, I said that I wanted to remove it. At this point, we've got some beautiful flips. So here we've had a beautiful flip. Again, we are making a beautiful flip, which means that the trend can continue. This move is the outlier and that is tricky. However, we've had this outlier here too and started to make lower highs since then. In this case, we are making this outlier and continue to make higher lows, right? So here we've been actually making a lower high and rejected previous resistance. In that case, the area around 1950 to 1900 in which we are currently moving is crucial. If we break up, it is a fast break up and then we can start moving towards the resistance. If we break this level here, it is an expansion all the way towards 2.7 to 2.8k. So then first Bitcoin, if we have this breaker, first Bitcoin is going to move substantially. And then if Bitcoin is done, either it will just follow through and then also the other mages are going to follow through. So that's the case with the altcoin overview right now. If we're looking at the Bitcoin pairs, yeah, they are looking quite terrible at this point. But when they look terrible, that is actually the moment that you want to get interested into the charts overall. Now, when we're looking at the altcoin portfolio, it is also looking quite terrible, right? The valuations are low, which means that the Bitcoin pairs have been going downhill. We do make a PL in Bitcoin pair, right? So we are making more Bitcoin which means that a few of these are doing pretty okay in the Bitcoin pair, but overall, especially Lux has been painful in the charts. If you look at the markets right now, and if you look at the valuation of the altcoins, if you are watching a chart like this on Chainlink, and you're watching a chart like this on Chainlink against UCT, we've made some very good TPs here. We have been TPing in this run. We were expecting that this was gonna continue and have a breakout, but Chainlink stays in this range, which is boring, but hey, this is the case. Which means that right now, if you look at this case and you're building a swing trade portfolio, you're actually looking at an entry point and you look at a case where you want to get into a position to hold instead of sell. Especially if you combine it with Chainlink against Bitcoin, you can argument that Chainlink is currently just underperforming against the rest and we're waiting for a breakout for Bitcoin and confidence in the markets so altcoins can pace up overall. In this case, at these ranges, these support levels, it is not an argument to start selling your positions at all through which you want to consist holding on to them. Curve against Bitcoin, exact same story. It is the fifth time that we are testing this low. You would argue, hey, that is a period where we're most likely going to break through it. But as we are testing the range low here, it makes sense to actually be a buyer. So yes, I'm underwater in my UCT values, but at this point with the Bitcoin values, I'm quite satisfied with my positioning because at these levels, I'm definitely not gonna be a seller. I want to stay into the position and I want to hold for now, which is a boring strategy, but it makes the most sense through which you're just going to be patient. And of course, in a few months time, the altcoin updates are going to be fun from here. Another one that you could be looking at is Chainlink against ETH. Well, I need to get a pretty normal chart for that. The ETH valuations are also showing a signal, which means that they have been trending down, especially Chainlink has been trending down since July 2020, as Ether has been taking over since. What do we see here? We are making a retest of the lows again. So May 2022 was the low, also on a link against Bitcoin. And now we are retesting the support levels, which is again, not an argument to start selling your position, but it's actually an argument that you want to hold on to your position overall. So when we go back to the portfolio, all of them are doing bad, which means the strategy is quite clear. And the strategy is going to be that we stick into the positions. They are all at support and they are all waiting for more confidence in the market. So I'm not gonna be selling positions. I've got my TPs, you can find them in the public discord. And that is the update for now. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'll be back on Tuesday.